Hello to everyone watching this footage. It's Leviathan here again. And to start things off, I'm going to introduce myself to newcomers. I am born high-functioning autistic. I'm obsessed with fiction, and I'm planning to make my own creative universe like the late Stan Lee did for his. For this particular video, I'm going to introduce three characters with their own attributes and such, and I hope you guys can bear with me as I describe them to you. I'm sorry I don't have any visuals for you to comprehend, because one, I don't know how to do it as of yet, and two, I don't have any illustrations of these characters as of so far. It's gradual. I want to make more illustrations, but there are factors that I have to input in order for me to do so. So I'm sorry. I'll start with the first character on the list. Just bear with me. Fahrenheit. Real name, Lizzie Trevers. Height, 6 foot 1. Weight, 186 pounds. Status, hero and daughter of Denstrini. Base, the Paranormal Defense Headquarters. Mobile. Intelligence, three brains. Behavior, stubborn and willful. She'll do anything to defeat her opponents. Lethality. If, you're, if her guns don't kill you, she'll leave you as a charred cadaver. Weaknesses. She has some bad anger issues. Powers. She has razor-sharp claws, a long and gray demonic tail, high agility, advanced martial arts, wields a pair of Uzis, and is an uncanny guitarist. She can shoot flames from her mouth that could reach over 200 feet, can melt a 20-foot thick wall of stainless steel, and is completely waterproof. She's also unable to age past adolescence, but that never matters to her. Eyes deep red, hair deep black and a mohawk. Origin. One time, Denstrini saved a teenage girl from a gang of brutal thugs and took her to an ambulance, along with giving the teen an autographed picture. Denstrini then got transported to Ask Olympias, where the Preantrum Nonsiculus thanked her for saving the young girl and blessed Denstrini with a child as a reward. The next morning, Denstrini announced to her partners and workers that she's legitimately pregnant. When the child was born, her new daughter had red eyes and the gray stump of a forming tail, and Denstrini decided to name her Lizzie. As she aged, Lizzie's tail grew longer, her hair formed a mohawk, and she developed the ability to breathe fire. One day, Lizzie had an adolescent argument with her mother, and they eventually fought each other into a tie. When Lizzie decided to go solo for a time, she was transported to Tartarus and met her great-grandmother, Satana, who challenged her in a guitar battle in, in exchange for better behavior. After weeks of shredding their guitars, Lizzie finally won and was allowed to make her own choices. Earning the name Fahrenheit, Lizzie would have some occasional time outside the paranormal defense, but would still avoid fighting her mother. Costume. She dresses in a set of rocker clothes. Teams, Solitary, Redemption, and other heroes. Original inspiration, Rockers. This next one is a completely harmless cosmic deity. Just bear with me, please. Gaia. Real name, none. Height and weight, vast. Status, hero, and mother of all planets. Base, the core of the cosmos. Intelligence, five brains and a plus. Behavior. Witty, confident, and always proud of herself. She's never worried about any of the planets she creates. Lethality. She's never truly a threat to anyone. Weaknesses. Occasional indigestion. Powers. She has immortality, cosmic awareness, and can just date trillions of planetesimals for each passing month. Eyes, dark blue, hair, deep black, and flowing. Origin. One time, 
goddess decided to create somebody who would be in charge of the creation of planets. She took a sample of her heart, fused it with cosmic energy, and sent it to the core of the cosmos. After a while, the sample morphed into an eternal cosmic being known to this day as Gaia. From that point on, her sole pur purpose is to create all the planets throughout the depths of space. Once every month, she would develop a massive internal chamber where countless planetesimals will be exerted from within, with only a fraction of the labor pain that one would traditionally receive. She rarely gets hungry, but when she does, she eats chunks of space rocks from recently destroyed planets, which would eventually get processed into becoming a variety of newly destined planets in the process. Costume She wears a deep purple two-piece two swimsuit. Tames, none. Original inspiration, Gaia of Greek mythology. The last one is a semi-cosmic individual. And I hope you guys could bear with me. Halo. Real name, Angela. Height, 5 feet 10 inches. Weight, 188 pounds. Status, hero and servant of the Alpha Gods. Base, as Galimpius, mobile. Intelligence, three brains. Behavior, confident, compassionate, and willing. She'll do anything to please her masters, no matter the risks. Lethality. Only during a fight. Weaknesses. Cliffhangers and cosmic forces. Powers. She has immortality. Martial arts. Wield the glowing katana. Has a pair of wings that allow flight and semi-cosmic power. She's also a good judge of character. Eyes. Vivid magenta. Hair. Deep brown. Origin. Angela used to be an ordinary maiden from medieval times who had the lifelong desire to spread peace. Eventually, a gang of heartless criminals brutalized her and left her to perish in the forest. Though she did legitimately die, Angela's soul was soon transported to Asgolympius, where Goddess was pleased of her integrity and decided to reward Angela with angelic powers and was signed as an eternal servant for the Alpha Gods nicknamed since as Halo. Since then, the chosen servant Halo would do anything to please her cosmic masters. And although she does enjoy most men, she rarely has an intimate relationship due to her sacred duties. Costume. She wears a white robe that covers a suit of steel armor. Teams. Solitary or with the Alpha Gods. Order inspiration. Angels. Well, I hope you guys appreciated the three characters I introduced. And, um, uh, I am trying my best to make sure this podcast works for everybody involved in this and such. I want to be visually ple appealing. And I just sometimes have some feelings of stress and irritation and such. To be honest... I want to be a hero. Since the dawn of my existence, I want to be the kind of person that people would legitimately care for, if at all. But there's so much corruption, so much anarchy, and people getting away with it. How are you supposed to... I refuse to be selfish, and I refuse to ignore those in need. I just hope that my distrust for that form of corruption and such doesn't ruin my reputation in a social aspect. I just want to make things better. And I just hope I don't get perceived as someone who's not doing anything right, because I want to make things better. But there's so much chaos, it makes you wonder if there's even a point. I hope you guys understand, and I hope you guys would feel some form of empathy not just for myself, but for my creations as well. Well, until next time, I'm Leviathan. Hope you guys have a fine time with the rest of your month and such. And if you have any more questions, and if you want, you could like, subscribe, and comment down below. 
you don't have to. It's all on you. And I hope you guys have a fine rest of the month and such. And until next time, in transmission.